Now, what has to be told to you today is this. And you know I would say it, Lord. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are uh, the wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. Well, what does this mean? The thoughts of the righteous are right. Your individual thoughts. Righteous means you've chosen God and you walk that path. Doesn't mean you don't, you know, burp, fart, hate, get pissed, get drunk, whatever. It means you've chosen God. That's your way. God's chosen you. You've chosen God. Okay. Doesn't mean you're sinless. It means Jesus covers that with his blood. You're washing his blood, even though you're, you know, you could do better, right? I could do better. Yes. Okay. But the thoughts of the righteous are right. So your thoughts are right. Remember the beginning today, we talked about trust. Meaning you go with it. You don't ask 50 people their opinion. Doing that will diminish all your power and also insult God. And the whole thing goes south from there. I don't need to tell you what that's like. You already know. The thoughts of the righteous are right. Therefore, go with it. But the counsel of the wicked are deceit. Okay, the counsel of those that are planning their new world order that are planning all their uh, plans of having us worship the Antichrist, which is making a pledge that says, basically, I believe the lie and I reject the truth. And I get lots of goodies for doing that. Oh, boy. In other words, I accept that the flesh is all there is, that everything is about the here and now world, the earth. And this is where I need to make my home. Whether I have to keep reincarnating here by being a disincarnate entity, getting into a vessel here and there, however it's done, it's all about the earth, the material. All the supernatural powers are to be applied in the material realm. And if we obey the hierarchy, i.e., as Bill Clinton said, follow the rules. And he wasn't talking about the laws of the USA. He said plays by the rules. I know. He said this over and over again. And I knew exactly what he meant when he said it. I wondered how many other people knew what he meant. Not very many. Yes, you to prepare for your enlightenment. N meant what is enlightenment it is light it was God infusing your vessel with light is enlightenment it has nothing to do with esoteric studies Madame Blavatsky a Satori or any other concept of Zen Buddhism or anything else or or whatever it's it's an enlightenment is something that happens to you involving your free will it is, a ma- it is an act of love. It's called the consummation and the wedding feast. It is the completion and the end of your journey, but it is the beginning of everything that had already begun and will never end. Why God makes us jump through this hoop, uh, it's not him making us. We want to be here. The new age is a counterfeit of what I'm saying. I am saying the real thing. But most people of Christ don't talk of the real thing or they get off into the sort of cliches of Christ consciousness and all the buzzwords. You know, they try to and usually there's a, a, like a some kind of a political plot behind all that, too. But they they say 80 percent, you know, see it. So it sounds like I'm the one saying New Age stuff when I'm not. I'm saying the original thing because God is supernatural. So we must talk in the terms of the supernatural. I am not interested in the natural realm because the natural realm is a lie anyway. You know, our belief in it as real would be the lie. You know, and I understand that. I mean, it's not a, I mean, this flower is not a lie. I know that. This chair with leather on it, some animal died for it, for my comfort. Thank you. I know this is no lie. 
That wall right there, if I slam my head into it, it's going to hurt my head because I don't have, I'm not the vessel that goes through that wall, even though others are, even though it is possible. The spiritualist, the, the high, so far as I know, the highest they get, and oh, the UFO reality, <laughs> it's all tied in with this whole thing. The Washington Monument, the purpose of the reflecting pool is to, is to contact the spirit realm. These are spiritualists, the Masons, and, and you know, to that end, they think they know what God is, and they don't because they, their belief in, in Lucifer and Satan are two different entities to them. Lucifer is the is the bringer of light and enlightenment. You know, the Antichrist who will be upon the earth is to take the earth away from what will soon happen. That is that the Logos, the flaming sword, will come to the earth and implant itself in all. It will awaken all this DNA and all this stuff will happen. And they don't want you to be free. So the Antichrist spirit the spirit of the earth, the, you know, witches, warlocks, and all these people are involved. Even if they say they're all about love and light and all this stuff, they, they're being used then because they, their intellect is fooling them into doing the bidding of putting a grid upon the earth that blocks any and all ascension of the beings here to the natural state that they remember, you know, in some kind of weird ancient memory or dream that they wish in their hearts to return to to be in harmony and in tune with the sound, which is the logos, which is the fire, which is creation, which is all of it. It doesn't really matter what kind of manifestation we have, whether there's a body or the, just want to be there, just want to tune up. And the new agers, they spend all their lives trying to get what you've been given on a silver platter. All their lives, they try to do it themselves to bust into heaven, I call it. You know, all of them. And they all fall because they call black magic uh, the uh, nothing but spiritual principles. And, and then they justify things like, you know, there's a dark side. And that, that dark side is justifying doing harm to others to advance yourself. Thus, game over. You cannot become a vessel of light. It, by behaving in any such manner whatsoever. In fact, the self disappears. They really don't want you to have this message today. I can guarantee you that. But being interrupted by outside things, as I have been today, is not the same as doing all this work and then letting it blow away like a Tibetan mandala. You know, have you ever seen how exquisite a Tibetan mandala is? It's all made of colored sand and it's absolutely beautiful work of art. And then once they're finished and completed and it's exquisite in its intricacy, they allow the wind to blow it away. It just blows away. And it's a perfect metaphor of the human condition. That we better put our, let's say, our uh, conscious intention into that which is permanent, which is that which is already blown away is the permanent. That which we create is not the permanent. Anything they try to create, yes, they, well, I realize why they wanted us here, okay? They, the, the vessels of darkness, want us here to prevent us from becoming vessels of light. That prevention process that they do to us actually is what God is using to burnish us, to make us better, to complete his work. He needs them there to do that. So they exist to try to challenge God and hold him back. And what gets through, in other words, out of that whole grid, that is uh, to keep everyone believing that third density, you know, the 3D world, if you will, the world that you can see, touch and feel is the real thing. But the bottom line on it all is uh, you're, this is not your home and you can't, you can't live here. This here is a process. And um, we have our free will to be able to make choices and go by that process. And if we make the right choices, then we ascend. If we make the wrong choices, we descend. And there's no middle ground to it. 
the the forces of the world, the political forces, the scientific or educational forces, and every other kind of force and institution that's been built by man's hands is in a sense designed to keep you from any kind of ascension, i.e. to keep you conformed so that you can fill your belly. You know, at the end of the day, they will pay you. They'll give you a job and then, you know, which is symbolic. And, and most of the jobs people have are symbolic. They're not actual jobs. And they get paid for performing that job, what, how, no matter how symbolic it is. And if they were to awaken, they would find themselves in an unemployment line and then eventually without anything if they push it because the whole goal of humanity is to stop souls from ascens ascending. So in a sense, just as uh, uh, you know, these people have tried for centuries in their secret societies and in their, um, in their writings – and uh, spiritualist uh, doctrine and so forth and, and um, Gnostics and various people, they have tried for all this time to engineer their own destiny, but have failed. There may be a few that have <clears throat> um, come into being able to walk through a wall or something like that. In other words, a manifestation of a different set of circumstances proving the supernatural exists, but they're stopped at that level. In other words, they can't go much beyond a couple of magic tricks. That's as far as they've gotten in how many millennia, the, the, the state of the art today of uh, occultism and spiritualism is as follows. A, um, engaging in dialectic with uh, spirit being, disincarnate spirit beings. The science of reincarnation and in, infusing souls into vessels, which means the, the original vessel has to go bye-bye, right? So that's kind of evil. Um, the uh, uh, traveling, um, you know, the space-time continuum and, you know, being a part of the UFO world, if you will, but that's part of the occult world. In other words, it's the, it's the same thing as Merlin and, you know what I mean, and, and magic and density. The actual UFO realm is not about liberation. It's not about liberation. It's about keeping man down. It's about the stopping of ascension.